Announcements uh, in today's bulletin, the few that were omitted and also other announcements um, to take, pay attention to. Um, the flowers this morning are given by Terry and Sue Damero and in memory of Nancy Benson and Anne, Anna Marie Gabriel. And you'll notice that uh, Anna Marie Gabriel's funeral uh, service is at Chapel of the Chimes uh, on Wednesday, Thursday, excuse me, Thursday um, at 12.30. Uh, other notes that Mercy Holistic Ministry, the showers are going to be here and open for use or just inspection. We expect them to take showers beforehand. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Anyway, that ministry has been moved around to different uh, churches and areas in the communities around and uh, have been very, very useful and helpful outreach. Uh, part of that ministry has been distribution of Bibles. How many were? 900 Bibles have been given for handing out. So that is ongoing uh, as part of that ministry also, among other things that they, they hand out. Um, is that enough? Next Sunday. next Sunday. Yeah, it's next Sunday. It'll be there and open. Also, the note about your Thrivent Choice dollars, if you're a member of Thrivent, that comes up at the, the deadline is the end of March. Uh, continue our Lenten uh, Thoughts Along the Way series this coming Wednesday. Um, and finally, don't forget to turn your clocks ahead on Saturday, so you're on time for church next Sunday. Please be seated for our opening hymn, Awake My Soul and With the Sun.
We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of God's whole creation, for the well-being of all whom he has chosen to preach Christ crucified, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their thanks for the blessings that flow from the cross of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this morning is from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson for this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning, I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. 
Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to, the, according to John, the second chapter. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, what sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken, the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated for the hymn of the day.
Our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Our text for our sermon this morning is taken from the Old Testament lesson for today. Uh, could probably be called one of the um, great passages of Scripture, the giving of the Ten Commandments. You notice the title for the sermon, God's Care for His People. You and I have heard enough caricatures, comments, and maybe even some humor related to the Ten Commandments over the world, over the time of our lives. Boy, we've forgotten the Ten Commandments. You know, it'd be a better world if people obeyed them. Pastor, you should preach more about the Ten Commandments. If you want to get to heaven, just obey the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule. Or they're really outdated for this 21st century. Or the church bulletin board that says, special this week, keep eight of the Ten Commandments. <laughs> but you know, we get tired, at least I do, of those caricatures and even the humor. But how do we get a handle on the full picture of what God means in the Ten Commandments? You know, our lessons today were loaded with sermons. Paul's the thing about the power of God and the wisdom of God um, better than the foolishness of men. You get a handle by starting with the very beginning of that text for this morning. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. With that, there's a huge story, isn't there? I am the Lord your God. And what did I do for you? I brought you out of that miserable life in Egypt where you were slaves, where you were pushing those rocks up to build those big pyramids for the pharaohs, where you were not at all free, but you had a life of misery and slavery. You see, that puts it in perspective. I am the Lord your God, and the word in Hebrew was Yahweh. And Yahweh had a special meaning. It wasn't El Shaddai, the God of thunder, or anything else. It was the God of the covenant, the God who cares. That whole picture of that Hebrew word is sometimes lost on us in just the word Lord. It's Yahweh, the God who loves you, who cares for you, who frees you to serve, because you are my people. And so the entire story of a gracious God who created us, who created the world, is told in that short verse. Hear that first. You can't understand the Ten Commandments. You can't even get a picture of them without that verse, without that total story of a gracious and loving God. Before the law, there was deliverance. Before God says, thou shalt and thou shalt not, he declares, he declares his love for them. I have delivered you. If you want to know now how to live and how to be happy in your freedom in the promised land to which I am taking you, here it is. I am your God, and I care for you. And then come those great words of the commandments, beginning with I am the one 
and there are no other gods. And then you go on. Not take my name in vain. Remember to worship. Honor your parents. Don't harm your neighbor or your brothers, much less kill them. Don't commit adultery. Be faithful. Don't steal from others. Don't slander or bear false witness, but put the best construction on everything. And above all, be happy with what you have been given and not covet what is others. But at the heart and center is that first one. If that isn't there, nothing else matters. He is the one who gives us life and guides us. You and I don't live in the, a world that honors that first commandment, do we? How many do we know that say, well, yeah, he's there, but he's not really around. He doesn't really bother me or much less concerned about me. Psalm 19, which we heard today, celebrates that wonder and goodness of God from the beginning of creation that he gave us. Luther, in his large catechism, spends a great deal of time on the first commandment and ends his commentary with these words. We had to explain it at length since it is the most important. For as I said before, where the heart is right with God and this commandment is kept, all the others will follow. But there's another truth to this, isn't there? We are God's people. And we are still saint and sinner at the same time. And as long as we live as baptized and practicing Christians, we still have a battle against that evil one who tries to replace God in the first commandment. Remember the temptations he put before Jesus? The final one was, the high mountain, all the kingdoms of the world, they're yours if you bow down and worship me. And throughout history, many have. You can have it all, the devil says, if I'm your number one. And so our catechism instruction, if you might remember, cites that threefold purpose of the law of God. As a mirror, as a curb, and as a rule, as a mirror reflecting back to us that we often miss the mark for God's will in our lives. As a curb against violent outbreaks of sin, keep the car on the road, don't go up the curb. <laughs> you know, and our, I thought about that the other day. Uh, our curbs have become, have you noticed in the streets, kind of slanted, kind of, you can get off the road real easy. Not hurt your tires. But the real curb is there. Hey, there's a limit. And then finally as a rule to guide, to show that care, what that caring God is doing for us and would give us in life as we serve him. The commandments are there. It's sort of like a skilled physician that spots the shadowy signs on an x-ray that show trouble. And so that Spirit of God searches our hearts and brings us to the conviction of our failure to keep his commandments. But you know, and there's another thing our world often tries to tell us, is that guilt and shame are, are neurotic or wrong. You can't make anyone feel guilty. Not all guilt is neurotic, or is all shame wrong-headed. There's a healthy shame and guilt that can bring us to our knees before our God and seek his mercy, which is never withheld. You see, our Lenten season is a time for us to re-examine our lives and remember that the cross with Jesus, to remind us of that Yahweh God who cares for us, that he son, sent his son to carry our guilt and offer himself for us.
Where does this all lead us? I would pray that it leads us to number one, thankfulness and praise for the commandments. A guidebook to life with God because that ends up at the foot of the cross and at the door of the empty tomb on Easter. That assures us of God's constant care when we fail. Remembering our baptism and hearing these words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, I would pray lead us to that daily life of service inspired by the Spirit. Remember the commandments. Remember what a caring God we have. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which truly passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. In our prayers this morning, um, we have... Four special prayers. The family of Anne Marie Gabrielle, whose funeral will be this coming Thursday, um, as she passed away last week. Uh, for Londa Scove, as she celebrates her birthday today and <laughs> surgery tomorrow on her knee. Celebrate well, Londa. And for young Tatiana, who we prayed for Wednesday night, a young 20-year-old who's being diagnosed with leukemia and is spending a month in the hospital uh, undergoing chemotherapy. Uh, she is about 19 or 20 years old. And for Tom Stoner, one of our members, um, hospitalized with an infection. Let us pray for the church here and around the world and for people everywhere in their various circumstances. Lord, over all, we give thanks that the heavens declare your glory and we pray your blessings on all who seek ways to use the resources of your good creation to feed the hungry, heal the sick, and shelter the homeless. Guide them toward bountiful harvests and life-saving technologies. Lord, in your mercy, O Lord, who brought your people out of slavery in Egypt, hear the prayer of those who long for freedom from oppressive regimes, false imprisonment, poverty, and social discrimination. Awaken a desire for peace, justice, and human dignity in the citizens and leaders of the nation. Give them compassionate eyes so they may seek to help one another, relieving hunger and despair with loving and sharing actions. Guide and protect armed forces deployed and those who work for peace and security in our local communities. Open our eyes to the vocation we have as people of faith each day. Lord, in your mercy. Wise and loving Heavenly Father, who chose those whom the world considered foolish, weak, lowly, and despised to be joined in the body of Christ, give us your strength and wisdom. Open the doors of opportunity for the church to preach Christ crucified and risen, no matter the form of opposition they encounter, so that many will come to faith. Strengthen clergy and lay leaders to focus not on institutions or statistics, but on the righteousness, sanctification, and redemption our Savior won in his gracious sacrifice for us in grace and love. Lord, in your mercy, we ask your gracious answers to the prayers knows near and dear to us, the family of Anne Marie, Tatiana, Tom, and Londa. Visit, relieve, console, and uplift them according to your plans, using us where possible as part of the answer to their petitions. These and any other things you would have us ask of you, Heavenly Father, grant to us for the sake of the bitter sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so he has taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And now may God Almighty, the Father who created all that exists, the Son by whose death we have life, and the Holy Spirit who has worked in our hearts, that we may boast only in the Lord, bless and keep you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.